I'm Seamless, and this is a new how to bass tutorial. And today I'm going to show you how to make this sound. This is one harmer and nothing else. There's nothing after this, I don't think. I might, I'm pretty sure I disabled the effects. Yes, I did. Nothing there. So this sound is an experimentation on something I've wanted to make with harmer in a long time. I just kind of just endeavored to give it a shot, which is messing around with the prism's ability to change the level of the prism impact per harmonic based on level. So I'm gonna show you what that means in a new harmer. And when I'm doing that, I'm gonna answer some basic questions that people probably have, like Seamless, where have you been all this, all this time? I have been here. I just haven't made anything that I thought was worth doing something with. Um, what, uh, why has that been the case? What else has been going on? Garden variety, personal bullshit. That's just really not worth talking about. Uh, what's the plan now? I'm actually going to do what I did the very beginning in the very beginning of the Seamless channel, which was just to do something when I finally have something that's worth showing. I did try to industrialize a lot of what I was doing the last time I was really totally active, and while that's cool, you know, and productive, it's a nice thing to do and whatnot, it's super duper hard, and, uh, I really felt bad, like, forcing a head material that I just didn't like. Uh... And so now I'm just going to do what stuff that sounds good when it sounds good. And if it takes a long time, then it does. And if it doesn't, then it doesn't. Because if I don't remember however many of you that were around way back in the day, but sometimes I would do like three videos in the day and then there wouldn't be a, a video every three months. So this isn't exactly new, um, but that's what's up. Let's talk about this thing. Um, so there's two tricks I'm using on the prism here. The prism uh, is controlled by this window up in here over this guy's knob. That dude. I'm going to turn my stuff down because I'm recording a video now. I'm doing it live. <gasps> I did check levels before doing this. Um, anyway, by default, there's this window that is just there. It's just this way for him to kind of demonstrate what happens when you mess with the prism, which is that it'll move harmonics around and pitch according to this graph here. Um, this is one of these graphs inside Harmer that represents uh, harm harmonics in even octaves as opposed to uh, even hertz. So each of these little steps here is one octave worth of stuff. Um, what we're doing here is just a whole way up like that. And when we're in the, uh, multiply mode here, this turns into a kind of harmonic shift thing. In fact, it becomes a cheeky third way to get you to, uh, square harmonic order from saw harmonic order. Um, and we're using this fun, uh, by ordering this past the filter. So over here in the unit order, the advanced page of the prism, there's the filter. We'll put the prism after the filter and we're going to engage one of these modes here that lets us uh, turn up the prism or down the prism, depending on how loud any individual harmonic is, which are going to change with the filter. See that happening there? As the filter moves up and down, if every individual, so this, is, this is Harmer, added to processing. Every individual harmonic is its own little universe given information in order so that in concert all the harmonics add up to being a behavior we expect. In the case of harm, uh, filters, it cuts up and down harmonics to, to be a filters effect. Doing this before the prism means that we get the smooth transition of volume, and that means we get also a smooth transition of pitch. Um, what's going on in the main guy here is I have a pretty specific filter shape going on. This was a shape I got after meddling around with the idea that I wanted to have multiple levels of motion. So this is that same prism shape where it's all the way up is square order. So basically, if the filter's all the way up, the harmonic is going to be in square position. And when it's middle down, it's going to be in between uh, the square position and the saw position. And when it's all the way down, it's going to be in saw position. So uh, the majority of the harmonics are going to be kind of in harmonic position. And this is why it's able to maintain like any semblance of sharpness. A problem with messing with it, like with the direct way that we did with the other guy, is that uh, um, a lot of the harmonics are going to get out of phase and they're going to stay that way. This one, it does move them around a bunch, but it moves them to a position that keeps them kind of in phase. So we're still able to have like a, a, a feeling to it. I'm, I am I am augmenting this with some pretty intense uh, effects with just distortion and compression, but largely... It's still the fact that we're keeping it in phase that's helping and that the, the pitch all the way up is even. Whew, speaking of the effects, um, I'm going to bring them up because normally I would turn them off and show you what I'm doing before that, but it's actually part of the sound because uh, you can mess with that with this knob up here, this filter, the fader rather. This is um, a thing that lets you control and, and, and also to what phase the effects and the drive uh, uh, volume are being carried out. And in this case here, I'm automating so that it's actually happening to do this and like what's going on is that all the way up actually means that it's off 
and then in the middle it's doing its normal thing, normal deal, its normal deal. So this uh, macro go up to X. So I'm able to get the one macro going here, um, along with other stuff. That is turning the effects on for the up half of the macro, so that the distortion and the harmonics and stuff is happening there, but then it cools off for like the coolness in the lower bit, the lower bit. <clears throat> the other point of using Harmer today for me was that I wanted to try and get this kind of growly motion stuff going on, but with as little unlinear phase things like. I EQ the crap out of stuff. I use EQs as filters, and well, I, they're filters anyway, right? The regular filters, lots of filtering and distorting and compression, which in multiband compression, which is also a lot of filtering. That's a lot of phase distortion, lots of phase just screwery, and a lot of the stuff, a lot of the like actual modulation and on Vocodex, don't be started about that in phase destruction. But like, the, see what we're doing here with the with the phaser. We actually, I am using the phaser here, but like that, its effect on the sound doesn't screw with the phase. I mentioned the phase earlier, and that means that we can have. Um, like the growly cake and eat it too with our phase profile. Um, I also want to talk about the phaser because we have it here in harmonic mode. Harmonic mode is cool because it changes the phaser's behavior uh, based on the individual harmonics change in pitch. So when the filter comes around, um, I'm also automating it to be on, on, on the, the back row. So it's like mostly this first half. So like when you, when you see this hole here, this actually is the second half because the lower half is off mostly. It's one of those snappy kind of double double curve macros. So when you see it fade in, in the second half here, it's actually fading in the last quarter, which is what this this shape is representing. I just want to balance together the visual and the control here. Um, pointing it out because uh, when the filter goes way up there, you can see the phaser get uh, denser inside the part where the more level because it has a change in pitch, which changes the phaser shape. So as the filter like um, is is kind of like the as the filter is is uh, revealing it, it's revealing like a different harmonic profile, which changes the phaser's approach. That's really something I wanted to get also out of this was like tremendous motion on the macro, so that like you're not just opening up a filter on like what is like straight uh, set behavior, but like as you're moving it, every part of it is changing, and that's also something that's hard to do and keep your phase profile. Super easy to do something like uh, in Serum with the very like the reverb filters and the comb filters for days, but <clears throat> if you want any kind of sharpness out of that sound. You have to either be very careful about your post processing or just forget about it. I wanted to see if I could get close to that kind of thing without uh, having to go too far away from just additive processing. Um, I, w I was trying to do harmon harmonize or harmonizer stuff. It didn't totally work out. Um, so I didn't m much use them here. Um, I did a lot of like my, of what I normally do on post EQing. I did actually in the actual post EQ inside, inside Harmer, which is something that I just neglect. I just don't do. I should do a lot because... Like really, it feels like basically like I'm saying as little regular EQing should be done on sounds like these. If you want sharpness, that is like there's there's like there's a lot of um there's a lot of feeling in particular older processes, especially like respaces and stuff that kind of rely on what old uh, minimum phase processing does to it. So that's like you know if you go too if you get too clean, it doesn't sound as good. But if you want the clean and still have motion and stuff. You got to be as linear phase about it as possible for it to survive all the stuff you do to it. So I wanted to really see how far it could be done in a purely additive environment. And it's pretty great um, so far with this guy. I'm also messing around with the regular, um, the, the unison pitch. <clears throat> so this is like that um, prism window, only this is what the unison differences between two voices are when it clones itself. The unison, as you can see, is quite low. It's not adding too much to it, but what it does is it causes the phase cancellation to happen basically like this, like a foreman way, and it uh, makes more movement go on in the mid-range, and because I'm using it so low and the phase starts so close to together like that, it doesn't get so far away from what's sharp. Um, I have a little bit of phase randomness engaged even a little bit because actually it was too sharp. Look how clean that is, and like here's how unclean it could be. So there's, there's range in there. And it's like, right, just enough to get just a little bit of action in the randomness, but still have the sharpness as a, as a scaffold. I like it a lot. Um, what else is important to talk about this guy? And then I'm, I don't think I'm automating anything else. That's n oh, well, I went into the, the local EQ. So the difference between a local EQ and a global EQ is that you can see how every note is just a collection of stack of harmonics. Um, the global EQ does... Uh, it does not move. It will affect it at a value of hertz. So any harmonic that interacts with the hertz value will get changed. Local EQ affects the harmonic. So no matter where the harmonic is, that is the harmonic that will get changed. So what this graph is doing, the only thing this is doing is that it's bringing down the sub the tiniest amount because the sub was quite loud compared to everything else. 
I have a bit of the protection on, which is this guy over here. I don't know if it's on by default, but what it does is that uh, uh, it you can define. Uh, there's a mask. I don't forget where it is, but you can define uh, a separate a set of harmonics that does not get affected by anything. That will always be there no matter what volume articulation. Nothing. Um, I, just, I think volume volume articulation doesn't uh, doesn't doesn't affect it. But point is that it keeps it around for most stuff. Um, actually, I think it's actually in here. You can tell where it is. Yeah, the protection is over there. So you can tell upon which it gets protected from <clears throat> or not. Uh, point being is that by default, it's the first couple of harmonics. It's like sub sub protection kind of thing. It's not super valuable just because the effects are still post that. So a lot of like, you know, some more destructive things are still there to happen to it. So it's not a perfect direct out sub, but it is perfect in terms of trying to keep it additively stable. Still very loud. So turn it down a bit. Um, nothing else funky. Not too much. Uh, I do have the grain, like I have it on like the highest quality settings, which are not perhaps super necessary, but just to explain them, um, the ramping over here determines how fast each individual harmonic, uh, actuates in terms of volume and it changes it per harmonic. So like a faster, higher frequency harmonic has a faster ramping time than the lower frequency ones. It's pretty great actually, because it, uh, it, it, it very smoothly declicks versus like straight up declicking, which you can do if you also want to do have it down but if you go too far down it starts to distort because it, it uh there's ring modulating it at that point ring modulating it at that point where it actually it's faster than itself um i also have I, i'm not using even doing image resynthesis <laughs> you tell i haven't been doing this much um but you know did not, if i did <clears throat> that's what i would do smooth mod is off which means that as uh hard as the tracks ppq is will be how resolute your automation is but it'll be fast um, and then the grain, so this is by default is usually pretty far up and this is like how, how well it interpolates uh, a curve, any given curve on a thing. Um, especially for automation, automation on things like I'm using mostly straight lines for stuff or like stuff like this out here. And so I'm not totally sure if that's governed by it, but I, if I like want a thing to be a thing that I really want it to be, turn all the way down. That makes it so that it like really cares about how far it happens. It have I've only ever seen it matter when I'm trying to do like the actual percussive stuff because if you try to actuate really high frequency things really fast, you get a kind of like almost phasery sounding thing instead of a sweep. And this is why if you want it to actually be a sweep, this is where you make a sweep. Uh, other than that, that's oh yeah. Well, let's, let's actually explain the post effects here. I'm using the sign crush um, distortion mode, which is a little funky about what it actually does, but I wanted it not so much to like make it louder because I, I am I'm turning it up pretty hard to, to go into distortion for it to just kind of fuzz. Um, and then this is the dude that's being like mixed on off with the whole thing. I, I'm, I'm not really sure if the, the compression is going on off with it. It might be this, the, the dry mix being post at, which I really hope it is because I just wanted to do that to the distortion. I didn't really want to do this to compression and it feels like it's staying on there the whole time. So it's kind of nice, but I only really had that compression there because I wanted to see if I could cram all this into one armor without doing anything in post. I'll probably do stuff to it in post if I wanted to use this in a song, but mostly just to get it to mix the stuff. Um, and also cause I'm probably going to side chain it either way though. Uh, this was an experiment in having extremely mobile harmonics, which, um, is just something that I just am endlessly pleased by with like the, the, the prism approach and uh phaser in harmonic mode. Anyway, this preset will be uh, available to download in the description of this video. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and all that fun stuff. And as usual, have a nice day.